Okay, so we learned we're back at the range and uh, we've got the free float barrel on there. And uh, I said some things at the end of the first range video, uh, which were completely proven uh, ridiculous uh, based off of what we learned on the construction of the MP10. All right, so uh, the barrel nut wasn't loose. Uh, the barrel enters the receiver and the area of the chamber is actually inside uh, a collar that the uh, barrel nut torques around. So, and then the barrel had to, has a registration pin at the three o'clock position that uh, keeps it from rotating. So there's no way that uh, that barrel could be loose, that there's any gas uh, exiting out of the barrel. And uh, based off of how I had to yank that sucker off to untorque it, uh, the uh, barrel nut was not loose. Um, you will also notice in the uh, other video that the, uh, and I had said that the BFA, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the muzzle brake had only been hand tightened uh, that I discovered when I was cleaning it. And so what I did um, in, in retrospect, as, as I remember, is I slapped a crescent wrench on there and made it tight without any regard for the way that the muzzle brake is designed. So if you look back at the video, you'll see that the bottom, which is does not have any holes in it, uh, was off to almost the 3 o'clock position more, or I should say, as you're looking at the barrel, more of the uh, 7, 7, 8 o'clock position. So that would have caused the gun jump after each, after each round, right, to go off to the side. Would that affect aim? No, it, what it affects is your speed of getting back onto the point of aim. But it doesn't, you know, the, the, the bullet leaves the, the barrel on its f uh, path followed by the gas, which is affected by the compensator and the blowback, you know, it, you know, it, it affects which way we want it to come up and back, you know, so that we can get right back on the target. So we've got the free, free float uh, handguard on there. And uh, what we're going to do now is see if uh, there is a difference in whether the barrel was affected heavily by the old, uh, either the stock um, AR-10 style handguard or the Embus, the Magpul Embus handguard that I had on there before. Okay. So I'm going to start where we left off, and that's with these uh, steel magazines uh, by d &H Tactical. These are steel, not aluminum, um, and also the uh, P-Mags. We'll see if there's a difference uh, after these. Uh, these are pretty hot. It's uh, probably around 80 degrees now, and now we have a side wind from the north uh, cross. Uh, the range laterally. All right, so center mass is where we're going. All right, so let me go down and check it because right now 
Um, it looks like they're all uh, in a line from what I can see. Not center, but all grouped. I had a couple flyers off to the right, but uh, it looked like they all kind of massed on top of each other. So let me go down and check it out. And maybe now I can make an adjustment for zero based off of that 10 round group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 10 rounds and I'm going to make an adjustment. Two to the left. One, two. And then three up. One, two, three. Now you remember on the Leupold Mark IV LRT with, uh, I believe it's the T1 turrets. I'll uh, put a graphic. Um, movements are one quarter MOA at 100, at 100 meters. So each click will should move the point of uh, the point of uh, impact a quarter inch in either direction, elevation or windage. So, like I said, uh, two to the left, three up. Let's see what we can do. Uh, I'll be aiming at the top right hand target this time. Okay, here we go. Flyer there. <clears throat> There's a lot of shimmer right now downrange because of the heat. So, a couple of groups, but again, they're all touching, so uh, what is it? I don't know. Let's do, uh, you know what, I'm going to put, one up, or I'm sorry, one more down. I'm going to go back one click. So instead of the three up that I put initially, I'm going to do uh, two. And then uh, we'll go to these PMAGs and see if any other difference is being made. We'll use the top left-hand target right now. But these PMAGs are pretty warm. They've been sitting in the sun here for a while. I mean, you can squeeze them, you know what I'm saying? And they, they change shape when you squeeze it, not... Not bad, but it's still plastic. All right, top left hand target. See if we can keep these squeeze bags effective. <clears throat> Man. 
it's getting pretty hard to see these targets now. And I'm talking about your exact point of aim with the with the heat shimmer here. Looks like I punched a hole out of the bottom of that target there. Oh, so check it out. So I'm not convinced. Uh, there's a lot going on here. The rest of it is that the squeeze bag here. And I'm just I'm not trying to make excuses. What I'm trying to do is illustrate how the mechanics of firing, you know, affect and the things that you have to eliminate. Uh, the things you got to think about as you figure out how you're going to do these things, right? So I have to figure out how to best maintain uh, my best trigger squeeze technique. And in this ground here, I'll show you. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a pocket here that my elbow has just dug into as I was shooting. And I, you saw me a couple times scoop dirt in here to try and fill it up, right? Then there's a squeeze bag thing that's messing up my wrist position, which is in turn messing up my trigger finger position, right? I still like to do, as I, I explained in my um, 5560 video, I like to do uh, what I call samurai grip, right? So it's uh, bottom, bottom two fingers are your main gripping fingers, just like in Aikido. As you're gripping a samurai sword, it's your bottom two fingers that maintain the grip. The rest of the fingers guide. So that's my grip, and then I like to t do a torque with my wrist so that my fingertip rests on the tr on the trigger just at the tip, right? But as I'm struggling to keep this up, now my wrist is changing, and now my trigger finger is like this instead of completely stretched out, and it's a different experience. Now I'm squeezing... Uh, squeezing the trigger like this instead of like this how I like to and this is because this dirt is sliding away the squeeze bag stuff is is in order for it to be underneath the uh, center of the rifle you know it's got to push on other things like my firing arm so just more training you know is what I need in familiarization um, just more rounds, more rounds, and more money. <laughs> but, uh, you know, these are all these things. Like I said, I'm, I'm not good. Normally I like to shoot AR style like this. Right? Just squeeze in here and do it like this. Uh, I can tell you that the, this collar over the barrel nut is hot now, of course. So as you do this aluminum... Right, uh, gloves are more necessary uh, now than ever. All right, so this may be a no-go, you know, depending on, you know, what your situation is. So anyway, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reload magazines and head up to Hill and see if we can ding some plates.
up at the perch. All right, same targets as before, 400 meters respectively. Right target is 400, left target is like 415. So let's uh, do our happy stray lock app. <clears throat> so close, hit calculate. So if I go to the reticle, just to the left at 400 of the second dot down to uh, aim at center mass, all right? So that's without any adjustments to any of the uh, elevation or windage knobs. All right, so let us do that. Hearing protection on. Lock and load. Where'd it go? There it is. 400. Over. Over. Ping. So now I'm aiming just at the bottom. I've got the reticle at the bottom. It's bouncing around because I got no elbow support here. So let's see what else. Easy, easy money. Target's spinning now, so. Okay, so let me switch over to the left target with just a little bit longer range here. Or maybe I was shooting at the left target. I don't know, we'll see. all day so yes it works the uh, the floating the floating barrel works I mean you saw that during the, in the zero the difference between the zero hits um, it all works so you have to determine 250 bucks is your life worth it you make the call Hey, thanks for watching. I'm going to go ahead and try and plink some more stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, the proof was in the pudding. And the pudding is float your barrel. That's the flavor. Float your barrel. If you like this video, check out my other ones. Share and subscribe. All right, y'all. TSF signing out. You have a good one. I hit it on the side. And that is it.